click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the crystal field theory and now in this topic we are going to talk about the crystal field theory for the tetrahedral complex. So what is the theory behind this? Let me talk about that in this topic. So friends, we are going to talk about the crystal field theory for the tetrahedral complex. So for that, we have a particular diagram so that I could explain you that is how and where does the ligands are being located. So based on that, let me give you the diagram. So friends, this is nothing but a tetrahedral complex where we can find that is the metal is present in the middle of the tetrahedron where we can find that is this is one of the ligand first, second, third and fourth and all the ligands are approaching the metal between the axis as you can see over here that is between x and between z axis one ligand is approaching and between x between y there is another ligand and between y and between z there is another ligand so therefore in that case basically we could say that is the ligands are approaching between the axis towards the center metal so in that case we could get two kind of observation and the two observations are we understand that is the central metal atom it consists of the d orbital and out of which basically dz square and dx square minus y square are those orbitals which are in the direction of the metal ligand bond axis so they have maximum electron density along the axis and thus they experience minimum electrostatic repulsion by the ligands so now let me explain you with the help of this diagram only so talking about that is dz square and dx square minus y square so obviously they have the electron density more in the axis that is x y and z but the ligands are not approaching on the axis in fact they are approaching between the two axes and that's the reason that is this dz square and dx square minus y square they experience less or minimum force while talking about the other orbitals that is dxy dyz and dzx are the planar orbitals so they have maximum electron density in the planes and ligands point directly toward them so therefore they experience maximum electrostatic repulsion so in that case suppose let me help you with the help of this diagram so now let me explain this with the help of this diagram that is dxy dyz and dzx they have more electron density on the plane so in that case basically we could say that is since the ligands are the one that are been approaching the central metal atom that is in this plane so that's the reason because of the electron density it will be more so that's the reason ligands and the metals they feel they experience large or maximum force of repulsion that is electrostatic force of repulsion so this is how basically there will be splitting of the d orbitals and the d orbital will be split into the following so the splitting of the metal d orbital in the tetrahedral crystal field can be given as because as we understand that is this is degenerate metal d orbital in absence of ligand and suppose if the ligand is approaching the d orbital of the metal so in that case the degenerate metal d orbital it will split into two energy level the one is eg level and the one is t2g level so here we can find that is there are two orbitals that is d x square minus y square and dz square so these are the two orbitals which experience that is minimum repulsion and that is the reason that is it has lower energy while talking about that is t2g that is it consists of that is dxy dyz and dzx orbital and obviously we understand that it experience that is a maximum repulsion and that's the reason because of the repulsion it has maximum energy so there are splitting into two energy levels and if we try to calculate the difference between the energy levels so we could get that is delta t this delta t is nothing but it has a value of 10 dq but if we have to compare the energy level of that is dx square minus y square and dz square so this eg level is basically 0.6 delta t lesser compared to that of this energy level so that means this orbitals are very much stable and the electrons entering in this orbital it will be very much stable but suppose if the electrons are entering in this t2g level obviously they will be destabilized by 0.4 delta t so therefore this are the two energy level and this is what i have want to discuss about suppose if we have to fill the electrons and suppose if the electrons are been filled that is in the lower orbital that is dx square y square and dz square so in this case electrons will be filled here first and then it will be filled 
here or here it will depend upon the ligand if it is a strong field ligand then obviously we understand that it's this splitting it will be more and that's the reason that the value of that is the 10 dq it will also be more and there will be more splitting so therefore the electron that is entering or suppose if i'm talking about the third electron so the third electron it will not enter here it will enter here only that is at the lower energy level and that's the reason those kind of complex where the electrons are being filled in the eg level that is whenever we are talking about tetrahedral complex so those complex are basically known as low spin complex and suppose if the ligand is the one where we can find that is the electron enters in the t2g level so this only can happen if the value or if the difference between this two energy is less and that is because the splitting it will also be less depending upon the ligand then electron can jump to this orbital so therefore this is known as high spin complex so this is what i want to talk about and that's it so this was nothing but the structure of the tetrahedral complex based on the crystal field theory and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this concept very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much